Hello again, Joe the CRM chap here with another video and today we're going to be continuing in my series where we're going to be looking at some of the topics that you're going to need to get your head around for Microsoft Exam MB400. Uh, this is the developer's exam for those working with either the Power Platform or Dynamics 365 online. So in today's video we're going to take a look at something called business rules. Now business rules should be something that most CRM dynamic CRM developers should have a good familiarity or grasp on. They give you the ability of being able to do and tailor how a form behaves for a user using very sort of familiar type of controls. So you can do things such as, okay, lock a field if a certain field equals this value. You can show and hide fields, set a field's value, etc. Business rules are really important and something which I think developers may sometimes overlook. You know, Developers being developers may sometimes just want to just go straight in and actually start coding using you know JavaScript or JScript you know form functions to achieve the same requirements. Business rules should always be used wherever you can do. They're going to make your life a lot more easier. It's a supportive way of doing it, and you might actually surprise yourself in terms of what they can actually do as well as a solution. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a very simple business rule that sort of does a few things on the form itself, um, and we're going to sort of do it from start to finish and see how it sort of works in action. So first of all, we're in our sort of solution in the Power Apps portal. This will look familiar if you've been watching through the previous videos. We've got a few different components in here already. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to go on to our account entity, because this is the entity we want to target. Business rules must always be scoped to a specific entity. They can't be multi-entity bound or anything like that. Uh, so first of all, we go on to account business rules over here, and we're just going to click on add business rule. And this is going to snap us up open into the business rule designer editor. This is a fairly new addition. It's been around for probably maybe one or two years now, I think. Uh, but it gives you a very nice visual view of being, of being able to sort of visually see the flow of your particular um, business rules. You're constructing it out. You can do things like zoom in, zoom out. You've also got the ability as well of being able to take uh, generate a sort of screenshot of the business rule. So if you're doing some documentation or things like that, it can be very useful. Nice little way of being able to speed you along and things. So first of all then, we're going to build out our condition. It's just going to be a very simple business rule this with a single condition. And there's going to be a few different actions that we'll share. What we want to do as part of this is just give you a flavour in terms of what a business rule can do. Um, you know, the, the logic in there probably doesn't make much sense from an actual business point of view. It's more showing you here's what you can do with it potentially. So condition first of all, so we're going to have a very simple condition down here. We're just going to call this our MB400 condition. A condition can have multiple rule sets defined for it. Um, so in this case, we've got a single rule uh, at the moment that's set up. Uh, we can add on additional ones by pressing the button up here. The thing to note with this is that you then need to define, okay, what logic is it processing those under? Is it, do all of these need to evaluate to true or false? Or can it be that only one of these evaluates to a particular value? For the purposes of today, we're going to use the and logic as part of this, and we're going to be targeting the facts field and also the website fields. We're going to check to see whether they've got a value in first of all. So we're going to open up the list of fields down here. We're going to scroll down to the facts field. Probably doesn't get too much love these days as a field. Um, and we're going to say, um, does the facts field contain data? So is it is it um, not null in effect from a database point of view? Then similar again, we've got, what we're going to do down here is we're going to select the website field. And again, we're going to do a um, contains data operator on there and that's our condition ready to go the thing to remember with this and it just this does catch me out occasionally as well is that whenever you make changes within the properties of a component make sure you press the apply button before you click away otherwise you will lose your data um, so just always just remember to do that and uh, you should be good so first of all then the first component we're going to add onto this is a um, show the field so what we've got with with a business rule is we've got the ability of being able to do the set visibility on a, on a particular field. And as you can see, what I'm doing here, I'm dragging the component from the little toolbox down here and I can either add it on as a sort of success or not success action on here. So if the conditions are met, do these actions along here, alternatively do these actions underneath here instead. So we're just going to drop this onto the set, onto the uh, success conditions down there. And what we're going to do on this one is we're going to make sure that the facts field is actually shown on the form in the case where we do not have any data on it because we want people to populate it basically. So that's all set to fax and, fit and yes on there. So we can click apply on there. Uh, we'll just make sure we rename that as well. Uh, so we'll just give it a show fax field as a useful description. 
Uh, next of all, we want to make a, a particular field, the ownership field, a recommended field as well. Now, recommendations give you the ability of being able to present some information to end users in terms of what they, what you think they should be doing with, with a particular field in terms of populating it with data. And if the user sort of agrees with the recommendation effectively, you, they, they, can, they can then very easily just press a button and the field will automatically populate with the, um, with the information that's been sort of suggested. So in this case, we're just going to call this our um, ownership recommendation. Uh, sure spell. Oh. Ownership recommendation. It's on the account entity. It's going to be targeting against the ownership field, as we've just mentioned. Um, so, um, so this is a just give it a title recommendation. Uh, we think the field should be populated uh, this way. At this point I click apply and we can see we've got an additional details tab down here where we can then add on additional actions underneath there. So what we're going to do in this case is going to say, okay, the ownership field we want to set to a specific value. So in this case we want to set it to a, a public company um, as its value on there. Um, so we'll just do set ownership as the name on that. So again, always make sure you've got some um, descriptive values on there in terms of your display names and stuff. That's our recommendation all built out, ready to go. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to show an error message as well. So this is this is very useful in being able to sort of very e quickly and easily add on bespoke error messages when so, you know that users will be able to see and react to, um, you know, based on any type of condition that you can specify on here. So what we're just going to say on this, okay, well, we're going to say that the there's an error about the fact that the website field is empty. Um, so in this case, we'll just do please populate uh, populate uh, this field. Uh, and then we'll just do show error message on here. So that's all of our sort of, um, okay, if it meets those conditions, all of the necessary conditions for that have now been defined on there. We can see down here that as we've been building it out, we get a sort of text view on here to sort of show us, okay, um, you know, what is what is actually sort of occurring on there. So previously, if you're going way back to things like Dynamics here in 2013, this is how typically you would construct and work with business rules in a text-based view. It's sort of still here because it is quite useful sometimes just to be able to see it in sort of if, else, then type logic. Um, so what we now need to do is build out our effectively our else condition. If the conditions are not met, what does it do instead? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do another set visibility again. In this case, we want to hide the facts field uh, because it's got a value in it. Uh, set that to no in which case. Next, we want to um, we want to always make sure that the recommendation field is basically always set as a recommendation regardless. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do a copy, take the existing recommendation that we've got on there, we're going to select that down there, and then just do a paste on there, like so. So what we can do very quickly is, okay, if we if we need to drag and drop things across, we, you know, we need to make, make sure a condition always applies based on different branching rules, the tools up here gives us the ability to very easily copy that across and reuse that if we so want to. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to do a um, we're going to lock the website field. So in the case where okay, we a user has provided a, a valid um, value for this field, uh, we want to make sure they're not going to be tinkering around with it any further. So in this case, we're just going to go to lock unlock over here. Uh, we'll give this a name of lock uh, website field. Uh, scroll down here and select it, and it's already been populated there like so. So we can just click apply. So at this point, we've got our business rule. It's ready to go. We just need to just give it just a quick name. So we'll just call it MB400. We'll leave the description blank for now. And we'll make sure we've got it. Oh, make sure we've got it as capital letters, first of all. Can you save it at this point? Now, now what may be useful is that at any point, you can also validate the business rule. You may have seen it just very briefly pop up on there. But if I was to click it again on here, um, we can basically get the system to basically just check over the business rule that we've created and if there are any problems on it, it will be presented to us for uh, for our attention before we start to um, you know, proceed with getting it rolled out and set up. At this particular point, it's actually still in sort of draft form. It's not going to start applying this logic. What we need to do is activate it. And as part of this, we need to make sure that we've set our scope correctly. So the good thing about business rules is that you can apply them in several different contexts. Okay, you could set it so, okay, I want this business rule only to apply on this form. I want it to apply on any form in the application, regardless of 
um, its type or things like that. Or finally, I want to set it at the entity level so that you know, regardless of when the record is being created, where it's coming in from, uh, the logic that we dictated in here will always be applied. Now, in some cases, the logic that we're doing in here, such as things such as setting the visibility, showing recommendations, those are all things that target forms only. We're not going to be able to do the same for you know an SDK operation or for when somebody's creating a record via a port power automate flow. But certainly for things such as setting field values and things like that, that type of logic can be sort of um, carried out, show error messages, you know, things like that can be sort of done with it. So in the case of the example today, we're just going to select all forms on that. And at this point, we're going to activate the business rule. We could get just a little confirmation window on here just to basically just confirm we want to activate that. At this stage, this is basically good and ready to go. So in order to basically see it in action, we need to go across into our model-driven app. The thing that with business rules to always remember is that they are more tailored for model-driven app scenarios or when you're working with the CDS data, you can't have business rules for, let's say, Canvas apps or you know apps that are connecting to other data sources. It always has to be a model-driven app. So I've already got a model driven app that I've built out on here that's exposing out the account entity. So we're just going to give this a quick refresh just to make sure that the latest uh, information is being pulled through. And we're just going to create an account record from scratch. And we should be able to see that some of the, the logic that we've applied is already, um, is already sort of taking place. So if I was to, um, so for example, we can see that um, we can see that because we've not got a fa because we've not got a fax field in there yet with a with an number on there because we haven't specified a website it's already locked those fields in there. If I was to just give this just a test company name on here, uh, uh, let's call it like that. If we go across to the details tab, we can see that we've also got the recommendation shown on there as well. So recommendations will always appear as a sort of blue light bulb icon, icon next to the field in question. We can click on it uh, and we can see we get a sort of some additional text that's displayed on here, the title and the description text the text that we've sort of um, defined earlier. At this point, we can just sort of click apply and the information that we specified uh, as part of that um, has been populated. So the business rule is, is perhaps not behaving in a very useful way at all, really, because um, it's you know the website field is now permanently locked. I can't actually go in there and do that. The fax field isn't in the form at all either. But hopefully, as, through this video, what you've seen is okay. Here's what here's some of the things that you can do, and, and also just how easy it is to basically get this business rule set up and ready to go. And you know, there's a lot of different functionality in there which you can sort of look at as well. So you've got the ability of being able to, you know, set a field value based on various conditions, clear a field value, set a field's business requirement, or even have it so that when a new record is created from a related record, have it so that certain fields are defaulted to a, to a specific value correctly. So that's pretty much it for me today. So I hope this video has been really useful. Um, Feel free to leave a comment below if there's any other uh, feedback or comments you have relating to this video or the series itself. I'd we'll be very happy to hear from you and I hope, and hope this has been useful for your vision. Take care. Cheers.